Hey folks, Chad here with Exodus Trail Cameras bringing you our trail camera hack tip of the week. Have you ever noticed when you're walking through the woods that a, a lot of times your straps are more noticeable than your cameras? Or maybe you've tried to do a better job hiding your cameras, making them less noticeable, and when you take a step back, you could see the straps sticking out like a sore thumb. Well, we have a solution to that. Back in 2019, we really made a better effort to doing a better job of hiding our cameras, making them less noticeable for not only people, but also whitetails. And one of the things that we came up with was doing away with our two inch, six foot strap, completely doing away with that, and starting to use customized paracord. So all we did basically, we have six or seven feet of paracord where we tie a, some type of loop knot, a figure eight knot, where you create a loop in one end, and then we take our tag end and just feed it through the back of the camera. And we're gonna get this thing mounted up and show you exactly how we cinch it down and the difference between the two sets. So you have your, you have your tag end, you have your loop. All you're gonna do is feed your tag end through. You're gonna cinch that down relatively tight. So you're gonna pull that tight where you still have just a little bit of adjustment in that camera. You're gonna bring it back across the other side, take your tag end, drop it down behind the camera housing, pull that tight, and create a half hitch. So you're gonna put one half hitch in it, cinch that down tight again, and make a second hitch. When you pull that knot tight, the camera's secured, it's not going anywhere, and then if you have any spool or tail that you need to clean up a little bit, you could just simply spool this up and tuck it in behind your camera where it's not visible. And boom, with a simple hack like that, you've made your camera sets a lot less noticeable. Uh, you're going to decrease the odds of that thing walking away and decrease the odds of white tails uh, staring it down. So that's our trail camera hack of the week. Hey gang, this is Clint Campbell with Truth From Stand Deer Hunting Podcast bringing you the Exodus trail camera hack of the week. So you have a Trek camera here. What is a little bit different about this camera versus the lift camera is that it doesn't have a viewfinder, which is a critical kind of piece to figure out exactly what you're shooting when you're hanging trail cameras. Too many times I've left the timber and ended up getting, you know, not exactly what I wanted to get in the field of view. So one of the tricks you can use to make this work for you and make sure you know what you're getting going to capture before you leave the timbers, take your, your smartphone, flip it on camera mode, and flip it to where the camera is looking back at you. And then you want to kind of marry up your lens of your camera with the lens of the trail camera. And this will show you a pretty good idea of what your lens is actually pointed at. The field of view will be slightly different, but you'll know when, before you're leaving that you're not going to get a bunch of empty, empty pictures or no pictures at all. So that is the Exodus trail camera tip of the week. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Kevin Vistason with the Deer Hunter Podcast, and I'm here with Exodus today with your trail camera hack of the week. We're going to talk about antenna orientation in specifically to cellular trail cameras. Here with the render, you have an antenna that has an access that can turn. This is recommended to be placed out away from the tree so that if a raccoon or a squirrel or anything puts any pressure, on this, it actually has some give on this access to relieve the pressure. Um, they said they had been getting some, you know, inquiries about broken antennas, and this appeared to have remedied some of that. So, when you put your camera out, have the access of the antenna be able to turn away from the tree one way or the other, and that is your Exodus hack of the week. Hey, folks, Chad here with Exodus Trail Cameras, and today I'm bringing you the Exodus Trail Camera Hack of the Week. We're gonna show you how to use a SD card reader on an iPhone to most efficiently import all of your photos and all of your videos and keep them organized on your iPhone. And one thing I wanna say real quick is, while this is super easy to use in the, in the field to get these photos onto your phone and to preview them, it's really not a substitute for having two SD cards and kind of swapping them out. But if uh, you're in a hurry and you're on your way to the stand, and you know there's a bunch of pictures on a specific camera, you can download them super, super quick. Um, you can download them super, super quick and you know then go to your stand and preview them. So real quick, you just plug this thing in your phone, go ahead and plug your SD card in, and all we're gonna do is go to our photo, our photo application, and down the bottom right-hand corner, there's gonna be an import button. You hit import, select the import location, and then import all and boom, all your files from this SD card are imported to that desired location 
and uh, you can put this back in your camera, format it, delete it, whatever you want to do, and you're off to the races with hundreds or thousands of pictures straight to your phone in just, uh, just in a minute or two. Because most cell cams have over-the-air capabilities where you can physically manage your data, your SD card storage through your mobile device, through your phone, there's really no need to buy super large capacity cards. So number one, those large capacity cards are more expensive. Um, so you're gonna save some money using some smaller, um, smaller capacity cards. But then on the, on the flip side of that, if you have an eight gigabyte card, you know, you're gonna hold, let's call it six, 7,000 photos, depending on uh, the compression software that the camera is using. If at any point in time, you think that you are, the capacity of that card is reaching its maximum, you can simply go in and format your card or delete those photos uh, via OTA commands through your app if you have that capability. We have that capability, so using a small a smaller card is definitely a hack that um, that we follow religiously. So not only the size of the card matters, but also the writing speed. So when you look at uh, the class categorization of a lot of these cards, you'll notice um, different writing speeds. And from what we found from running these things two, three, four years now, um, is that some of these higher writing speed cards, let's say above 80 megabytes per second, can start to give your cameras fits, it's specifically if they're SDH, SDXC cards, where they're 64 gigs or larger, there's actually a partition or a wall on that card that um, it's gonna give you a lot of SD card problems. So smaller cards, they're cheaper, they're more efficient, less issues, um, and you save some money. Those are our five hacks, we hope it helps. If you have a hack yourself, make sure you leave it in the comments below.